Welcome back to Trading 360. I'm Nicole Petalides. Time for the big three. Three stocks, three charts, three trades. Ben Lichtenstein will take us through the charts. Here to take us through the trades, Joe Tegay of the Rational Equity Armor Fund. Thank you both for being here on this Tuesday. We have been bombarded with so much information. I mean, the usual of economic news in the Fed, but we have uh, the Washington news and, you know, waiting on, on more, right? So, Joe, how are you feeling about the market, which last week had the worst week, yesterday had the best day since whatever, you know, you get my point. Today we've had back and forth action. Um, some of your thoughts today. Yeah, and I don't think Ben's going to disagree with this one. There's a lot of news out there. Some of that, some of it can make us really feel very emotional. We need to just tune that out, focus in on the charts. That's going to tell us everything we need to know. Uh, and, you know, we've seen some rotations. We've seen a couple things that uh, might be causing us a little bit of concern. But as long as uh, these stocks keep on going up, as long as uh, the trends continue, uh, everything will be uh, just fine. When that does change, we're going to see it in the charts. So uh, it's it's uh, it's hard to do. I know the news can be very emotional, but if we can keep that on the back burner and just focus in on the charts, that's going to be everything we need to know. Right, understood. Let's take a look at Taiwan Semi. Uh, one of the names that, when we look at the semis, seems to have been a little bit better of late. Uh, we know the group has been all over the place. The likes of NVIDIA back down below 120. Um, the group's been volatile. Some of your thoughts on Taiwan Semi and where it's headed. Today, we see it up about three quarters of 1%. Yeah, today, you know, maybe not doing uh, as well as uh, more of that rotation trade happening on. Again, we had that big rotation out of the mega cap, out of some of the biggest winners uh, that we've seen so far this year into some small caps, into some value names. Uh, and we started to see Taiwan Semi get hit by that. Uh, we also saw, you know, to to avoid the news. Uh, uh, we also saw them get hit on some political news, uh, but it found some support. And that's what's uh, crucial for me. Yes, it came down uh, significantly from a higher level, but it found some support, I think, crucially at the 50 day moving average. And I think this is just a fantastic stock. Uh, it's a stock that makes so many chips for so many companies. And they're also making, a, there will be making a lot more in America soon with the six and a half billion uh, from the Chips Act given to them. So uh, I think this uh, this could be a buying opportunity. Again, very cautious. I'd love, I, I like that it's above the 50 day moving average. As long as it stays above the 50 day moving average, I think it will be a green light for me. Uh, so this is a spot where I'm nibbling and looking to add more to my portfolio. Yeah, so watching that 50-day moving average uh, very closely as well. Ben, we'll take us through the charts, please. Yeah, I like the cautious optimism. The first chart we're going to look at here is not a pretty picture. We have seen some weakness, but this is more on the short term. And as Joe mentioned here, possibly just stacking up for a longer-term buy opportunity. And that's where we're going to kind of give the benefit of the doubt to the bulls is that uh, longer-term chart, as Joe was mentioning, taking a step back and kind of letting the chart uh, tell the tale here. We will do just that. Uh, but again, leaning on the bigger picture, the five minute candle chart is where we're going to begin, though. And some of that short term weakness down to 162 to begin the week. We're trying to form a little bit of a bottom down here. So just wanted to establish a couple key areas to keep an eye on. Should we do that? You've got, well, the upper extreme of this range, we'll call it 170. 8, 179, 187, the next kind of line in the sand to really start to see some momentum to the upside. But I wanted to step away from the five minute candle chart and just look at the hourlies because this is where it gets interesting. Nice trend up off the end of April lows around that 125, 130 level, all the way up to 193. Now, again, I'm just sort of Focusing on this is kind of one larger area of consolidation. There is a little bit of weakness playing out here because we did try to auction higher, form this balance after topping out around 194, and we have rolled over, so taken out a key area. But again, as Joe mentioned, uh, recently holding up above those June lows. I think that's important, mid-June lows. So, And then again, just longer term, benefit of the doubt to the bulls here. Why? Because it's a well-defined trend up off that fall 2022 low. That was down around 60 bucks recently, just shy of 194. Four, currently in a balance forming 177 is the middle of that range if we establish a lower extreme here nicole build momentum through 177 that's the opening up door of the retest that the bulls want to see 193 ultimately could be up for a little bit of randomness some sideways consolidation a little horizontal type price activity but we're trying to establish a bottom here i think that's key Right, and really uh, looking for that value, as you noted. So it's getting up there, but then pulls back. So final thoughts on this one, Joe? 
Yeah, cautiously optimistic. Uh, I think it makes a lot of sense with this and some of the other names I'm going to talk to use options with it. Uh, with volatility still on the lower end of the range, uh, I think it makes a lot of sense to own these names with calls to limit my downside. Yeah, and I'm just looking how it's performed a year to date up about 65 percent. Another name that has been a stellar performer, and that is Microsoft on your list today. It's up about one and a quarter percent year to date. This also has been um, up about 19 percent. Where do you think this is headed and why? It's at 448 today. Yeah, I mean, back to my theme, if we're going to see these all-time highs back in the market, yes, there was some rotation. I think the leadership needs to take hold again. Microsoft, for me, just a fantastic stock. It has been forever. I, can, I expect it to continue uh, to be one of the leaders of the market. And uh, I'd love to see it regain some leadership, regain its all-time high. I think uh, if it can do so, I think everything will go with it. And we'll just be in a better shape uh, broadly if we have the rest of the market doing well and the Magnificent Seven doing well. So uh, I love that it found some support at previous levels of resistance. Uh, I think this is another just buying opportunity for a big name like Microsoft. So yes, for me, uh, this, is a, this is a no brainer. Uh, it was associated with the CrowdStrike mess up kerfuffle. Uh, I don't really think that impacts them uh, much. I think it really negatively impacts CrowdStrike. Uh, but for Microsoft, I think uh, it will be uh, maybe a blip on the radar looking back and they'll think all, all, all things are still green for Microsoft for me. Right, understood. Okay, so you see, uh, you're feeling bullish on this one. Let's hear more about this on the technicals, please. Yeah, I think the technicals are not quite as supportive of that bullish narrative right now. We have seen some recent price activity, and it's taking its toll on the hourly candle chart as well. Let's just start with the five minutes and the more granular time frame. You can see here, Nicole, as we dive into this chart, there has been some weakness here. We're going back to uh, a week ago. Uh, two weeks ago, Thursday, you can see 467, 468, all the way down to those lows we saw into the end of last week, down to 425, trying to recover here, but still some heavy lifting to do for the bulls. Let me show you why this is a little bit concerning. You can see we've kind of rolled over after topping out around just shy of 470. We've come off and have seen some significant price decay. We always talk about these areas of consolidation that form on the way up. In this instance, we had them establish... 440, 445, most recently 465, and then look what's happened. We rolled over, took out this 445 level. That was important, and we're still kind of holding below it right now. So uh, after losing some of the momentum of the upside, there hasn't been any major rejection of this lower level to really kind of regain composure or uh, reestablish itself. But taking a step back here, while the five and the hourly are not necessarily supportive of that bullish narrative, Take a look here. The daily definitely is still, right? I mean, we've got a situation where it looks like we're starting to balance around 450. That's exactly what the bulls want to see. I mean, as we're ripping higher into the month of June, beginning of July, sustainability becomes a bit of a question after, you know, stock tears throughout the year as this one did higher. And again, so now the bulls want to see something a little bit more overlapping, rotational, accepting this upper level. And right around 450 would be just a perfect area to do that. Okay, thank you for that. Any final thoughts on Microsoft? By the way, we're going to hear from Google after the bell today. So we'll be uh, really kicking it off with some of the uh, Magnificent Seven, right? Tesla will be reporting as well. Um, final thoughts on Microsoft. Yeah, you know, the expectations are high for the Mag Seven. Uh, no, no, um, nothing different with Microsoft. So, um, yeah, we've got a lot of tech coming next week, too. Uh, having a great run just recently back above that 445 level. Um, you know, I think that uh, 432 area was really important for me. I love that it found support there. Uh, I think, you know, if we, if I have a bullish narrative, I'm going to find it in Microsoft. I think Microsoft will lead the stocks higher if we are going to be seeing all-time highs uh, in the near future. Right, understood. I was watching CrowdStrike like crazy since the global outage, a huge outage that affected companies, travel, banks emergency services. And the question became, you know, will the other names in cybersecurity be beneficiaries or is the whole group sort of under pressure? Um, I, I did read that CrowdStrike was up a little bit today, but Palo Alto was one name that seemed to be maybe in a good place um, as of Friday. And so where do you think we're headed with Palo Alto? 
Yeah, we, we're going to need cybersecurity. Uh, it's not going to end just because of one misstep by one cybersecurity company. You know, I do think CrowdStrike will recover some of their losses, uh, but I think they might lose some market share. I think regardless, uh, people are still going to be looking for internet security, going to still be looking for this cloud security, this anti-threat uh, protection. Uh, CrowdStrike will still do well, but I think they'll lose some market share. Uh, I think Palo Alto Networks is uh, a fantastic company, and uh, I think they will be some of the one of the beneficiaries uh, for uh, this error. And uh, yeah, I, I think it's a fantastic company, uh, and I think it's a long-term hold. Yeah, look, I mean, CrowdStrike dropped almost 30% in just a few days. Um, today, it's up 4%. So, you know, you need cybersecurity, right? We can't deny we need cybersecurity. Let's take a look at the charts. Ben. Yeah, hey, Nicole. Uh, trend up across multiple time frames here. I, I like the bullish stance on this one. Short-term setback, but we're already kind of starting to turn things around here, taking a look at the one-minute candle chart. And we normally don't get into the more granular time frame, but I wanted to just kind of focus on that turnaround and certainly emphasized into today. Take a look up to just shy of 341. Stocks rallying, enjoying some gains and holding this upper level. No rejection as of yet. Looks like we're about to start getting into something a little bit more rotational, a little bit more sideways after breaking out of a bit of a range to begin the session here. But a step away from the one-minute candle chart, and uh, this is quite a step away into a daily. We've got three areas of consolidation that formed higher and higher levels. Simply put, we're in trend up. So uh, just sort of testing this middle of the range here, back to 325. Nicole, again, this is something I've been talking about for a while. Not only the upper, the lower extreme, the middle of the range, the key areas, the structure, the trend, migration of value, and everything that we uh, get into. But this most recently, it's that retest of the middle of the balance after establishing and forming a very mature area. And that retest oftentimes uh, provides a, a trampoline kind of catalyst uh, um, if it coincides with news example, uh, another prime example. So let's keep an eye on this right now. That 325 level, big area, and we're holding it. And then it, it just adding a little bit more time onto this chart. You can see why, again, giving the benefit out to bulls here because of this well-defined trend up off that 2015 low from around 40, just shy of 381. That was back in February, if you remember. Currently in balance, again, forming around 325. So let's watch this one because we could build momentum to the upside here. It's an interesting time, again, with earnings coming out of the next couple of days and the structure, the chart, the technicals are kind of feeding right into that. So this will be one to keep on the radar here for sure. Yeah, and look, so much of this will be also uh, contingent upon how tech does overall, how the market does overall. I mean, you have people coming on who are expecting a 10 to 15 percent pullback for the market overall. So um, the uncertainty is there. Great to see you both for today's big three. Joe Tagay of Rational Equity Armored Fund, our own Ben Lichtenstein there on the charts. A good look at Taiwan Semi, Microsoft and Palo Alto.